Okay, so um, now we're ready to inoculate the petri dishes with some with the mycelium we collected this morning, and um, we have some uh, mushrooms that we bought from the uh, supermarket. So we're going to take tissue samples and transfer them into the agar. Now I'm going to show you that it's not in the clean box because we this is already a contaminated petri dish. But basically what you want to do is um, you're going to take a tissue sample. So the first thing you're going to do is um, sterilize the, the blade. Okay. Um, then to cool the, the blade, um, just dip it into the, the agar. Okay. Then take your, your tissue sample and then transfer that into the agar that you just used to cool your blade. So you're not getting any cross-contamination. Okay. So sterilize. Um, then cool, then tissue sample, petri dish, and then repeat the process. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. So we've got various agar um, mycelium that we found from the in the forest this morning um, and we're also going to take tissue samples of various mushrooms. We've got um, shiitake, um, oyster and chestnut. And, chestnut and white button. And white button mushroom. Okay so we'll take um, we'll take these tissue samples and put them into petri dishes and we can go on from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so, Dave, do you want to switch that? Uh...
your uh, wild mushrooms, um, they're going to naturally have contamination. So we don't need to be so careful about putting them in there. We just need to get them in so they can start their growth process. Um, and you're going to transfer them at least two to three times to get a clean. I would say more three to four because of contamination. So we'll take one of our uh, samples that we found earlier. Firing in there, and keep the moisture in the center. So I totally want to write on what that machine was, put on, put on the date on. Yeah, you Okay, so we're going to demonstrate this outside the box because the box makes an awful lot of noise, it would seem. Um, so we're going to go through the process that you would you would see us doing inside the inside the box. Um, whenever you're transferring mycelium material, there's always going to be a chance that you're going to get contamination. So you may have to repeat this process two or three times before you get a clean uh, mycelium. Um, so first of all, you're going to sterilize your your blade, okay. Um, then place it into the agar that you're going to be using to transfer your sample into because what you don't want to get is any cross-contamination so you're always doing the same thing with the same petri dish sterilize, work with the petri dish um, so we're going to take a small tissue sample it doesn't have to be large you can just take a small tissue sample from this Okay, and we just place that into the petri dish Okay, you want to tap it slightly down so it's in contact with the petri dish so it has access to food. Um, in a petri dish this sort of size, I reckon you, reckon you can do about three to four, um, probably ideally three, um, of the same mushroom, the same tissue type, in three locations. Because you may find one works slightly better than another. Um, and always try to collect the tissue sample from a different location on the mushroom because you may find that in a certain area it's uh, more um, alive than in another. Okay, so just tap that onto your petri dish and that's it. Sterilize and do the next one. Okay. So, now we have our uh, petri dishes, they're all inoculated with various types of mushrooms, some of the wild ones that we picked this morning, um, some of the ones we bought from the stores, and we've got a pile of mushrooms here, which I now believe we're going to take to the kitchen and cook for dinner. Yay! Yay. <laughs> so how long will it take uh, for these to grow out? Okay, um, we should start seeing some life in 48 hours, okay? Um, then we've got to keep an eye on them for contaminations. Uh, if we've got enough of them, then it's up to you. Either we extract the, the mycelium away from the contamination, try it again. Mm -hmm. It's good practice in any case to do it. Um, or we just uh, remove that one. But it's, uh, we've got plenty of working ahead of us. Uh, we've got to now monitor these. Um, get a nice uh, strong sample before we transport that into the score jars that we created yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So after 48 hours you would see some growth and then how long before 
before uh, you could transfer it. A week, week and a half, something like this. Right, okay. Correct, yeah. Depending on the, the growth speed of the various mycelium, mm -hmm. different mushrooms will have different uh, growth rates. Um, it'll take 48 hours before you start seeing it. It'll start c coming out like very furry tendrils outside of the mycelium. Mm -hmm. um, if you start seeing other blotches of growth, that's probably contamination. They'll be in a completely different area to the mycelium. Um, the mycelium, you'll notice um, in certain scenarios that uh, if there is contamination near it, it will be killed off. Mm -hmm. So you'll see the, the, the contamination being killed in the pattern of the mycelium because it will start producing its own antibodies. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting thing. And uh, we're looking for the fast growing ones. Well, we don't re ideally, um, as a material for construction, mm -hmm. it's going to, <laughs> we're going to have that balance between space that is mm -hmm. taken up while the blocks produce and speed and strength of the material. So we may have very fast growing mycelium, but not very strong blocks. So they could be used for insulation or these types of things that are passive. Yeah? Where we may want very strong mycelium, very strong blocks, which may take a little bit longer. So we're just gonna try and find a balance between, because we've also got to store these blocks while they're forming. Mm -hmm. yeah? So if we've got to store them for three months, that's a lot of storage space if we're going to have three and a half thousand blocks for a house. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. And if we want to store ten houses, that's mm. a lot of storage space that we've got to find for three months while we do that process. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. So if we, if we only need it for a short period of time, then of course it's much better. Mm -hmm. yeah? The first building is going to be a bit difficult, but then we can use that for storage for the second, mm -hmm. third, mm -hmm. fourth, etc. Et no, no. yeah. yeah. Okay. Alright, so I hope everybody found that interesting and uh, we'll be back.